And now this. The president is considering signing a new executive order on immigration and vetting. And it could come as soon as Monday or Tuesday. We've got more breaking news on that front. The president is saying he wants to act rapidly and in terms of speed for reasons of security. Let's take this to former Air Force Assistant Vice Chief of Staff. He's retired Lieutenant General Thomas McInerney. Uh, what do you make, sir, of this uh, new executive order? Well, I think that's probably the right strategy, uh, Liz. Don't get caught up in the, in the courts. Come out with one, rewrite it a little bit. Uh, they got it out fast. But the fact is, Liz, the American people expect President Trump, when we elected him, that he would operate fast against radical Islam. And he has done that. He has changed the vernacular. They're no longer violent extremists. They are radical Islamists. He has identified that. He's putting out all these executive orders to uh, nullify them and to get control. He's got a 30-day uh, order out to give me a plan how you defeat ISIS. And so he's moving out. The American people want that. They don't want left-wing judges and left-wing lawyers in the Ninth Circuit to stop him from doing his responsibilities as the commander-in-chief. Now, sir, uh, what we're seeing from government, U.S. government federal data is that the number of refugees coming into this country uh, from those seven terror hotspots, uh, they're now at levels double what they were the week before President Trump even signed that executive order. What do you make of that? I rest the president's executive order. That clearly shows he was doing the right thing. And the difficulty is, as we found out in Fort Hood, San Bernardino, uh, Orlando, uh, Chattanooga, all the different crises we've had, attacks that have killed Americans by radical Islamists, is how do you vet them? How do you pick them out? And so that is the challenge that the president has. And he wanted a 90-day moratorium so he could work on that. And the, Congre the uh, uh, judge out there decided to go against them, and then you had the Ninth Circuit. Why are they getting in national security business? Yeah, you know, General, and what's interesting here and, and, and cons deeply concerning is missing in this whole reporting for this story is that we, forces are bearing down on ISIS in Syria and Iraq. And as they get squeezed, that terrorist diaspora, according to FBI Director James Comey and other intelligence officials, uh, one that we've never seen before, this is what they keep saying, could be headed our way. And we just had an imminent, quote, imminent, a major terror attack foiled in, in France. It was targeted for Paris. Four suspected ISIS supporters, a 16-year-old girl. I mean, a 16-year-old. They were found with TATP bombs and explosives. A massive suicide bombing for Paris planned again. I mean, sir, a 16-year-old girl, I mean, we have even serious presidents saying no one can tell who a jihadi is. So we're talking teenagers. We know they've been in this fight, but a 16-year-old girl. That makes the vetting process extremely difficult, Liz. And again, there's more evidence why the decision by the president to put this executive order out quickly may not have been perfect, but to protect American people. And that's the threat we face. And the political correctness, and unfortunately, the left wing of the Democratic Party has enabled radical Islam for the last eight years, and they are still continuing. These are enabling actions by left wing Democrats that are enabling radical Islam to spread not only in the United States, but to spread globally. General Thomas McInerney, thank you for your time, sir. Love having you on the show, and thank you for your service to our country.